Hey everybody, welcome to my video on the quantity theory of money. Uh, this is something I teach in my intermediate macroeconomics class to illustrate the link between inflation and the money supply. Uh, so let's get started. We're going to start with this concept of velocity. And velocity is going to measure how fast money moves around the economy. So we're going to define it V equals T over M, where T is the value of all transactions, T for transactions, and we're going to proxy for this by just using nominal GDP later. And M is the money supply. So value of all transactions divided by how many monies are in the economy gives you an idea of how many times each dollar or currency unit gets spent. Now I can rewrite this as V equals P times Y over M, where P is GDP deflator or an aggregate price level. Remember that the GDP deflator is nominal GDP over real GDP, and Y is real GDP, so F of KL, and M is still money supply. So we could rewrite this as being V equals nominal GDP over Y times Y, because Y is real GDP, and you get the idea that the stuff in that parenthesis is the GDP deflator. I'm just showing you all this stuff as a little digression to show that this is still the same as V equals T over M. But we're going to roll with that V equals P times Y over M. That's the one we're going to be interested in. So let's move that and let's rearrange it just a little bit. We'll multiply both sides by M and we'll get MV equals PY. And that is called the quantity equation. The amount of money times its velocity equals the total amount of spending that happens. So let's simplify our model just a little bit. We'll start with our MV equals PY, and we're going to make V be exogenous. We don't have to, but that's a good starting point for this kind of, uh, for modeling this kind of stuff. Uh, so we're going to assume that people spend money at the same rate, but we can let things like the price level or GDP or the money supply change for now. And so where does this lead us? Remember, our goal is to get inflation. I'm trying to measure a link between the money supply and inflation. So what is inflation? Inflation is the growth rate of prices, delta P over P. The change in price divided by price. Uh, by the way, if you watch a lot of my micro videos, pi is always profit. In macro, pi is always inflation. I'm not sure who decided to use the same symbol for both, but I don't feel like rocking the boat. So we're gonna call it pi. Anyway, we need a growth rate in prices. So we're gonna to have to meddle with our quantity equation just a little bit. So let's bring it down a little further and let's say the growth rate of the left-hand side, the delta mv bar over mv bar equals the growth rate of the right-hand side. Now there's a couple of rules of thumbs with growth rates, and one of them is that the growth rate of a product is approximately equal to the sum of their growth rates. So the growth rate of M V bar is approximately equal to the growth rate of M plus the growth rate of V bar. And then on the right hand side, the growth rate of PY is equal to the growth rate of P plus the growth rate of Y. And this is a good approximation for our purposes. Now, Side note, V bar, we've made it be exogenous, we've made it be fixed, so its growth rate is zero. It doesn't change. So that's convenient, because now we just get that the growth rate of the money supply is equal to the growth rate of prices plus the growth rate of real GDP. So let's take this, let's solve for inflation real quick. Inflation, the growth rate in prices, is equal to the growth rate of the money supply minus the growth rate of real GDP. And this idea that inflation is equal to the growth of the money supply minus the growth of real GDP is the central focus of this little model that we're using. If your money supply is growing faster than your actual economy, you'll have inflation. If your money supply is growing slower than the economy, you'll have deflation. And it also suggests that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the money supply and inflation. So let's get a scenario here. For instance, money supply is growing at 5%. GDP is growing at 3%. Real GDP, by the way. 
which means that inflation is five minus three is 2%. Great, nice and simple. So now let's say the Fed policy changes and now our money supply is growing at 7%. Uh, so for whatever reason they're expanding their money supply, what is that gonna do to inflation if there's no change in GDP? Inflation will be seven minus three is 4%. When the money supply increased by 2%, or the growth rate of the money supply increased by 2%, inflation grew by 2%. There's a one-to-one -one relationship between them. All right, and let's do a follow-up real quick. Let's say that real GDP growth increases to 4%. What's that due to inflation if nothing else changes? Inflation is now seven minus four equals three. Uh, and that just suggests as real GDP growth rate increased, inflation decreased in a one-to-one -one way. So there's a quick intro to the quantity theory of money. And remember, the thing that we are most interested in, at least that I'm most interested in, is this. We needed to define our velocity to explain it, but this relationship is the one that has the most usefulness to us. So. Hope that helps you guys. If not, too bad. Good luck and thanks for watching. Uh, yeah, see y'all later.